So hello everybody and welcome to part two of refactoring the animation class and this is going to be the last hopefully the last boring tutorial we have to go through uh, so let's just get this over with so in the last tutorial we changed the way that our classes worked so now it's just a matter of fact of how we implement them and I'm going to show you how we do that in just a moment so let's go to our screen manager class <coughs> So let's go open up our variables. So right now we had a fade animation um, variable. Uh, we had a we had a variable of a type fade animation. That's not how it's gonna work anymore. So every animation we have is gonna be of type animation. Okay. So let's get that out of the way. So this is just gonna control whatever we wanna fade, right? Uh, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it in a second. So, uh, let's go to load content. So, I'm not even sure why Fade Animation has load content. I'm not sure why it's calling load content. Uh, let's go to our animation. That's weird, but I, I shouldn't be able to call it. But what we're going to do is just go to our screen manager anyways. It doesn't really matter. And uh, instead of calling fade.loadContent, we're going to call animation.load. Oh, you know what? What's the point? We just change its name. Ch change it from fade to animation and change it from uh, fade to animation. So that's our animation instance, right? And we change this from draw to animation. So all our fade animation is used to do is just to fade it has nothing has nothing else to it so what we do now is that we call fade in here and all we do is make a reference to our animation instance okay so once we do that then all it's going to do is going to take the animation modify the alpha and then return that value and then we can do whatever we want with it so if say we have a zoom animation right and we call it zoom we could call zoom.update or whatever, put in the game time, then put in the animation. So this fade animation would modify the animation's alpha value. The zoom class would modify its scale value. So all of it modifies this one value right here. And that's why it makes it more efficient. So for our whole class, all we just need is one zoom animation, one fade animation, or what one Whatever type we're going to be using, we only need one instance of it. And it makes it easier to manage that way. So now let's go to our splash screen class. And um, instead of doing a list of fade animations, let's do a list of animations. Okay, and you might be saying this is pointless. This is the one extra step we have to do, right? But it makes it very effective if, if we want to do multiple animations, right? Uh, so we'll just say... Uh, Change the animation. Say F animation is equal to new fade animation. And right here we'll say animation I. Or wait, what was it? Oh, it's fade. I like to name it animation just so I know that it's um which animation I'm talking about. So we'll just rename this. Just so rename all the fades to animation. We'll put animation I right there. Uh, animation. So for this right here, since we're fading all of them, then all we have to do is we will put fade. No F animation. Dot update. Game time, and then we'll pass in the animation image number and we'll make a reference to it okay and I was th I was thinking that wasn't gonna work right because uh, it won't work if you use the index or something so what we do is just make an instance of animation right here pass it animation image number pass an a right there and then say animation image number equals to a simple easy as pie okay and right here we draw it uh, the same way we're supposed to draw it so that's what the splash screen. Um, let's see if there's anything in the title screen. Uh, so now we have to check the menu manager then. 
And the menu manager, let's see how we did it. So the way we had our animation is that we had a list of lists of animation. So a two dimensional list. And the, the way it was supposed to work is that we would have it that um, based on uh, we could have store like for one menu item we could have different animations for every menu item and so on and so forth right and that's how we were gonna handle multiple animation but now we don't have to do that we, we can have a one-dimensional list of animation right and what we're gonna do is is this so we have a 1d list um, just store the animations like so and where do we store the animations right here? So our set animation method. So just, let's check these private methods. So in our set animation method, um, so we can get rid of this temp animation. And instead of putting temp animation, we just put animation dot add animation and just change these all to animation and uh, that should be fine and instead of doing new fade animation or anything like that we don't need to do it based on the uh, our animation types or anything right we don't need uh, to do that so we can get rid of this underlying for loop as well. So we'll just say it's equal to new animation. <coughs> get rid of this right here. And um, that should be fine. So it should be moved over one tab space. So that should be fine. Hopefully we didn't mess anything up. So what we're gonna do it's for a different animation, so we'll make an F animation. Uh, uh, if the we can make an instance of sprite sheet animation, and we'll just call it SS animation, and so on and so forth, right? And uh, so in our load content, we'll initialize them. So our F animation, SS animation, we'll make an instance of them. So now that we got that set up. In our update, this is how our update is going to work. So we're going to, instead of looping through it like that, we're going to loop through our animation types. Okay. So if, uh, if that's true, then we set that. Um, we set our is active, right? And then this is when we can add in our case statement. So we can say switch animation types I and then we can add in our case so we'll say case fade then we'll call f animation dot update put our game time in there now since this uh, is an indexer or something we have to make an instance of this we'll say animation is equal to animation I and then we'll just pass in the A in there. So ref A. And then we can have different case statements as well. So if this is a, a sprite sheet, then we'll call it SS animation. And so on and so forth, right? And then at the end, we'll say animation i is equal to a and that should work and everything should be changed so then we can get rid of this right here move the tab draw it and everything should be drawn exactly the same now let us test this out to see if everything is indeed in working order nothing should have changed from before so we, we are getting some errors so let's check out these errors quickly uh, so right here I put a void here it shouldn't be void it should be a constructor um, so one last error and I have override void load content so that's in the spreadsheet animation class so you can get rid of that so some more errors uh, if axis is equal to one oh could we have the break there so we can get rid of that because that was unreachable code 
and right here in player dot uh, CS we didn't even modify the player uh, dot CS as well so what we have to do is did we create so in the entity class uh, let's see uh, which animation so uh, right here we created a, a move animation right here so let's just make this animation and then we can make another protected member sprite sheet animation and let's call this SS animation okay so let's go to our player class move animation is equal to animation uh, load content everything should be the same and in our updates so where do we call our move animation dot update uh, so in our update method right here instead of calling move animation dot update then we call SS animation dot update put game time put in our move animation make a reference to it and everything should be fine in working order And let's run this and everything should be the same so we're still not getting the cropped out image and the reason for that is uh, quickly is because in our animation class we set the default um, the frame width and stuff to one by one uh, so right here after our load content we have to put move animation uh, dot frames and we'll say a new vector two three by four And I'm not sure why that is not working. That's kind of weird. Uh, let me check it out for a second. Okay, so the reason being is that after we reset the frames, we don't actually reset the source rect, right? Um, so we could easily do it by putting in it, it in like this, right? But it um, and just redoing the source rect again. Um, but that could be a hassle doing that all the time right so what we could do quickly is we'll go to the animation class and right now you see how we set frames to zero <coughs> we uh, we can get rid of that so we'll just um, not set it to anything uh, for now uh, so we'll say if image is equal to null um, then we can just say and we'll say and frames uh or you know what actually yeah so we'll say and frames is greater than frames is greater than vector two zero wait not equal to vector two zero sorry so if image is not equal to one and frames is not equal to vector two zero, then we set the source rect right here. So then we'll just go to our player dot cs, take this and put it above here, and let's see if that will work. And voila, that works. Uh, but what happened to our map? that's weird I'm not sure what happened to our map oh I think I know why so we just gotta change one last thing hopefully it's the last thing so let's go to our animation dot uh, CS and we'll just add an else so we'll say else source rect is equal to new rectangle zero zero image dot width image dot height okay so let's run this and we got everything set okay so I know the tutorial was long but I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching if you have any questions um, um, don't forget to don't be afraid to comment and don't be afraid to subscribe as well so that's it for this tutorial thanks for watching and bye